which is some work on visual question answering with my colleagues from the University of Adelaide. As you know, in visual question answering, the system is given a text question in natural language and a related image or photograph. In this work, we specifically focus on a data set of VQA for, uh, for VQA of clip art images. This data set was proposed a few years ago to make the computer, part, uh, computer vision part easier and to allow research to focus on the other parts of the system. And this also allows a more controlled evaluation, especially with the so-called balanced data set, in which you have two images for every question, one leading to the answer being yes and the other being no. And so the contribution in this work specifically is to use structure representation. So use those representation as graphs to represent both the input scene and the input question. For the scene, we are given a list of objects within the scene. I was be typically produced by an object detector, and each object form a node of the graph. We then define edges between those nodes that represent the spatial relationships between the objects. For the question, we use a tool from natural language to parse the, the syntactic relationships between the words. So this uh, naturally transfers into a graph where each word is a node, and each edge represents the syntactic relationships between the nodes. So those two graphs are then passed to a neural network that is trained to rank a set of candidate answers and do the actual question answering. So let's now look a little bit closer at this neural network. So as I said, in the pre-processing, we transfer, transform the question and the scene into two disjoint graphs. We then process those graphs separately with a mechanism that is similar to other works that have been proposed recently on neural networks for graphs. So each node is associated with a recurrent unit. In this case, it's implemented as a GRU. And those units, they serve to propagate information over the graphs by iterating over a, a set of, uh, a fixed set of iterations and actually propagate information from the neighbors and update the representation of each node. So a crucial part of the network is to compute a set of matching weights. So this part, um, is similar to an attention mechanism. A scalar weight is computed for every pairwise combination of nodes from the two graphs. So those weights are then used to compute the weighted sum of the representation of all the graphs, all the nodes from the two graphs. And this weighted sum then serves as the final representation to produce the answer. So this tab is crucial, and it uh, practically prevents uh, subgraph matching between the representation of the scene and the question. And finally, the output stage of this model is uh, simply an LMP uh, classifier that is trained to produce a score over a set of candidate answers. So in summary, this work shows how to use structure representation for VQA. And the main benefit is to allow encoding the structure of both the scene and the language, which can otherwise be lost in traditional representation as fixed length vectors. Other experiments uh, in this paper, which I haven't discussed here, also show a strong advantage for using pre-trained word embeddings and then encoding the semantic aspect of the language. So we have um, also obtained some results on real images uh, with this method. That has been some mixed results so far. But I think there's still a great benefit, potential benefit for focusing the efforts in VQA on a better processing of language. So if you want to talk a bit more about this, please come to our poster. Thanks. <laughs>